Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Sharif Abdelaziz, and I am a cardiac surgeon. I am here representing uh, Professor Rolf Zorian. He is the head of our research team in Ludwig Maximilian University of Munich and the chief doctor of our heart center in Lahr. I want to talk to you today about three-dimensional printing in cardiac surgery. I would like to show you some cases where we actually use the model in the operation before and after. So let's start. Before that, on the behalf of Professor Zorian, I would like to thank the organizers for the very kind invitation. So I guess through these two days, we have seen that 3D printing is no longer a view, no longer a concept, but it's the now. We can see that 3D printers have opened up very wide windows and doors for research all over the fields, the medical fields, the mechanical fields, the engineering fields. Yet for the doctors, I would guess when we have seen the first models, for example, these are printed models of um, uh, Neanderthal skulls of a child and a neonate, and we when we have seen these models in hand, we could have understand the difference between a model in hand, in comparative to the three d to the normal uh, imaging systems that we have been using for very long years. In three D, in our department in cardiac surgery, we can use this technology not just for teaching; we can use this to understand very complex anatomy. We can use it to pre-plan, optimally pre-plan operations, and we can use it to implement custom-made devices for every patient. Yet, this technology is not exclusive for heart surgery. This has been used in general surgery, neuro, plastic, vascular, and cardiac surgery. Our workflow now is that we obtain this data from a CT or an MRI or a 3D echocardiography, and then we process this data using software to extract exactly the area of interest and only the area of interest. And then the surface model is created in an STL format. This is a format readable by the 3D printer. And then we feed this data to our 3D printer where we can obtain the model in-house, in the hospital. And now I would like to show you and present to you some of the cases that we actually, they are all published cases. And I'm going to be showing cases from thoracic surgery, pediatric cardiac surgery, adult cardiac surgery, and interventional cardiology. So we start here with a case of thoracic surgery from the University of Nagasaki in Japan. And this is a case of a patient that went single lung transplant after chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And the bronchial anastomosis developed an ischemic changes which led to a stenosis of the intermediate bronchus. You can see that here. And using this new technology, we were not just able to 3D print a Y-shaped stent. You can see the stent here. But we were able, they were able to print also the airway to understand where to print these orifices, these black, small black dots, so that the airway can flow into the upper lobe of the lung. This is a custom-made prosthesis for that patient. And moving from the thoracic cases to the cardiac cases, we begin with the pediatric cases. The surgery of congenital heart defects is usually a straightforward in most cases, yet the cardiac vascular anatomy is sometimes unpredictable. This is the first case of a 16-year-old girl. She presented to us with a right descending aorta and a left retroesophageal abnormal subclavian artery. She suffered from dysphagia, dyspnea, due to tracheal stenosis. I would guess that there is also here many personnel that are not associated with the medical field, but I would guess that such video can show you the complexity 
of the anatomical structure that the surgeon has to deal with inside the operation room. This model was fabricated for pre-planning. We were able to understand in hand the disease, pre-plan the operation, sterilize the model and take it with us inside the operating room <laughs> and perform a smooth, uh, smooth surgery of an end to side anastomosis of the left subclavian artery and the carotid artery. Another pediatric case, this is a two year old boy presented to us with a hypoplastic left heart syndrome. The patient had a failed stage palliation and glen and tricuspid valve repair. This patient for the non-medical personnel was presented with one ventricle chamber in his heart. So he was a patient planned for a heart transplant. And through this model, we were able to pre-plan this heart transplant. We were able to take the model into the OP, into the OR, inside the surgery for orientation and perform a safe and smooth transplantation. <coughs> a third pediatric case, this is a three months old girl presented to us with a small ventricular septal defect. This means that the septum between the ventricles had a hole. And here you can see how small that is that we can only pass a tube of a pen inside it. So inside the operation room, this would be very difficult for the operator to see. But with such a model, we were able to pre-plan that. We were able to see exactly where the defect would be and pre-plan um, a patch closure for this, for this kid. And with that, we move to adult ca cardiac surgery. This is an 81 years old male patient presented to us with a symptomatic aortic valve stenosis after a coronary artery bypass grafting. So this patient had a bypass operation and after that presented to us again with a stenosis of the aortic valve. And to pre-plan such operation, I would like to pause the video here and you can see in red, this is a multicolor model that we printed. And here in red, you can see this is the graft. This is the bypass graft the patient already had. And for this operation, in a conventional operation of an aortic valve replacement, we need to do a sternotomy, meaning that we need to open this bone. And opening this bone while the graft is right there is quite tricky. And through this model, inside the operation, the operator was able to orient and pre-plan to do the sternotomy and to do the operation without harm or damage to the bypass graft. Of course, for the medical personnel, I would guess they know that today we can perform such a surgery with a uh, trans aortic valve implantation through a catheter. This is a second cardiac case. This is a 43 year old female patient represented to us with a right ventricle tumor. And through CT guided biopsy, we were able to understand that this tumor is a fibroma. And in such cases, we have multiple choices. We can either do a heart transplant, we can either do an excision in toto, or we can do a partial excision of the tumor. But to understand which would be the best beneficial option for the patient, we were able to print another 3D model. And this is again a multicolor model where you can see here the red is the wall of the heart and the green is the tumor. On the other side of this model, you can actually see exactly how deeply infiltrating this tumor is. And through this modeling, we were able to take the decision to do an excision in total. Now, this is actually a personal favorite of mine of for the use of such technology. This is a case of three-dimensional printing for preoperative planning of complex aortic or surgery. So a 70-year-old male patient presented to us with an aneurysm 
of the ascending aorta, the aortic arch, and the descending aorta. That was a case for complete aortic arch replacement. And this model was very helpful in preoperative decision making and planning of the frozen elephant trunk. This model, in this model, we were able to demonstrate the exact anatomy of the aortic root, including the valve, the leaflets, the coronary artery, the ascending aorta, the aortic arch, the brachiocephalic artery, carotid annulus, subclavian artery, and the descending aorta. For non-medical personnel, this might sound complicated, but what I'm trying to say is this is extremely detailed model for pre-planning of a very complex operation. This replica helped us not just to pre-plan, but to understand the disease, hold the model in hand, talk through what we're gonna do inside the operation, and pre-plan this process, for example, in the length and the depth of the stent graft and its landing zone. This is an in a picture from inside the operation room, and here under the plus sign, you can see the prosthesis for the ascending aorta, under the star sign, you can see the supraortic arteries, vessels. And under the end sign, sorry, under the end sign, you can see the prosthesis for the heart-lung machine. And in comparative to that, you can see the same structures here. So again, under the plus sign, this is the ascending aorta. And under the stars, the supraortic vessels. And after the operation was done, we produced, oh, sorry. After the operation was done, we produced another post-operative model. And here, we were able to see exactly the repair done with the prosthesis, with the stent, and understand exactly how did this operation go. And from such a case, we cannot, we, we cannot just only understand that such models are very useful for pre-planning, but they are very useful for post-operative evaluation for such patients. And with this, I would like to move into interventional cardiology. This is a 50-year-old male patient presented to us with a pseudoaneurysm after an aortic arch replacement. So after a surgery of aortic arch replacement, we found under this plus sign a pseudo aneurysm. And this gave us one of two options. Either we do a surgical removal and reimplantation of the supra aortic vessels or precutaneous coiling and closure using an occluder device. Such patients suffer from a high risk of dissection of the aortic of the supra aortic vessels. So we printed a model. Sadly, the video is not playing, but you can see here this part. This is the orifice opening between the arch of the aorta and the aneurysm on the back. And for such cases, usually the occluder commercially available is a circular one. So we took this model and we pre-planned on it and fabricated a custom-made coil for the patient. And this coil, we tested it on the model, which is exactly to the anatomy of the patient to make sure that this coil will work in the operation. And after the operation, we did another CT, and you can see again under the plus sign, it's clear. This is another case of um, interventional cardiology. This is a case of a three-dimensional printing of model for pre-operative planning and simulation of a trans catheter valve replacement. So this is a patient presented to us and we decided to use a trans catheter aortic replacement with a 26 millimeter valve. Unfortunately, the patient died 
due to a potentially ischemic event. So in re-evaluation to understand what happened in the operation, we got the data, and this patient also uh, had a very calcified aorta. All this white is calcified aorta, meaning that the operation is actually not so easy and the um, conventional implantation of such case is also very complicated. So for re-evaluation, we printed the model and we actually simulated this procedure again with the valve. And after carefully positioning the device, we noticed that the sinus of the valsalva was very small and the position was too close to the ostia, blocking the blood flow to the coronaries. So this model actually taught us that in such cases, it would be smarter to plant the valve as deep as possible. Lastly, we are now developing a technology of 3D printing of intracardiac defects from three-dimensional echocardiography images. They are easier to get, faster, cheaper than the CT. And here you can see an image of a 3D echo that we transform into a 3D digital model that we can print, and you can see here a bi-leaflet. Yet we face some limitations that the structures, some structures are missing, like the cordy. In conclusion, 3D printing is not anymore the future, it is the now. It's feasible, it's very useful in pre-operative planning, intra-operative orientation, and post-operative evaluation. And we proved that this 3D printing is extremely helpful in non-routine procedure in cardiovascular medicine. Thank you for your attention.